Welcome to episode 24 of Dominique Pernay's course on celestial navigation. Uh, in this episode, we're going to talk about assumed position, uh, probably the last crucial step to understand uh, before we uh, move on uh, to uh, more advanced topics. My name is John Pinto. I am an amateur astronomer and a mathematician, and I'll be presenting uh, Dominique's course to you. Dominique's course is um, in full uh, in these uh, books that he wrote, it's called Celestial Navigation, and the accompanying exercise book, which you can obtain from uh, marinenavigationbooks.com. I'll tell you how to order those. Uh, also at marinenavigationbooks.com, you can download a copy of the exercise manual if you uh, prefer uh, an ebook. And uh, that's going to be kind of important to do for, especially for this episode, because um, the exercises are going to require you to have that exercise book. So last episode, we spoke about, in general, the Mark St. Hilaire method uh, using publication 249. And we're going to get into the last bit of uh, business that you need to understand uh, in order to successfully use the Mark St. Hilaire method with publication 249. And that is the understanding of something called assumed position. All that means is <clears throat> the tables in publication 249 are for a whole number degrees, but most likely you are not exactly at a whole number degree of latitude or longitude. So <clears throat> what uh, this uh, assumed position allows us to do is to use those tables successfully and then to use that information to plot our uh, position on a chart, to draw a line of position on our chart, actually. Uh, <clears throat> So what do we mean by, by uh, making a smart choice of assumed latitude and longitude? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. For the assumed boat latitude, all you need to do is choose the whole degree of latitude that's closest to your DR position. <clears throat> uh, if you're at exactly uh, 30 minutes, you can you have your choice of going uh, up, up or down. Uh, some people also um, sometimes we'll choose a latitude based on the direction that they're traveling. So say they're traveling um, from northeast to southwest, so their direction is southwest. They might uh, use a latitude that's above their current latitude, one degree above, uh, because they know that they're going to be on that chart for a while, and so they don't want to keep changing charts. But in general, you typically choose the latitude nearest your whole degree of latitude. Uh, the next thing you have to do, and this is the probably the more crucial point, is assume a boat longitude that is such that the minutes of local hour angle, LHA, disappear, are zero, and is closest to your DR longitude. Uh, this is really the the other crucial thing that allows us to use publication 249. So if you're in west longitude, your boat is in, you know, west of Greenwich, uh, you will use the same number of minutes as those for the sun's GHA or whatever celestial body we're going to be uh, using to do our site. And the reason for that is, as you remember, when you calculate LHA for a west longitude, you'll be subtracting uh, GA, your longitude from the GHA. And when you do that, because the minutes are the same, the minutes will turn out to be zero in uh, LHA uh, for this assumed position. Um, if you're east longitude, a little, little more complicated, you need to make the minutes be 60 minutes minus the minutes of the sun's GHA. And again, because of each longitude, we're subtracting, I'm sorry, we're adding our um, longitude to the GHA to get LHA. And again, by doing that, the minutes of angle will become zero because of that addition. So let's do an exercise. <clears throat> so here's your DR position, let's assume. Uh, using the word assume too much here. Let's, let's propose that this is where you are. 
And let's say that the GHA of the sun, it happens to be this. You pull that out from the nautical almanac and you did your interpolations and you figure that out. So what would you use in a, as an assumed latitude? What would you use as an assumed longitude? And what will the LHA be based on that assumed latitude and longitude? And just to give you a little more practice um, in estimation, let's approximate the time of the site in boat meridian time, or it's better known as local mean time of the boat, um, <clears throat> based on what you calculate the LHA to be. So you, you may want to pause the video now, work it out, and then we can go on and look at the answer. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look at the answer. So this was our, our original information. We picked an assumed longitude, or you should have picked an assumed longitude of 29 degrees north, because that's the whole degree of latitude that's closest to your boat. For an assumed longitude, we chose 123 degrees, 57.3 minutes west. Now, why did we do that? Well, because we're in west longitude, we want our minutes to be the same as our GHA, so we did that. <clears throat> but our boat is at 124.09, at least our best guess, our DR. So we could make this either 124.57.3, or we can make it 123.57.3. Now, which is going to be closer to our DR position? Well, this is definitely going to be a lot closer than if we had went to 124.57.3. So we definitely want to choose this as our assumed longitude. All right, to get LHA, we're in west longitude, we subtract, and we get 35 degrees. Now, we do know the sun travels at approximately 15 degrees per hour. Uh, it's traveled 35 degrees since noon, so we have to be about at two hours and 20 minutes or so past noon. Again, boat meridian time or local mean time at your boat. Let's do another example. Okay, here we have a east DR position. We have our given information. What would you choose as your assumed latitude, your assumed longitude, your LHA? And again, let's get some practice approximating the time of the site in boat meridian time or the local mean time of the boat. Again, I'll pause the video, try it, work it out, and then we'll come back. Okay, we're back. Let's go take a look at the answer. Here's our given information. Based on our DR longitude, uh, sorry, our DR latitude, we've chosen a assumed latitude of 12 degrees south because that was the closest we could be to that DR position, latitude-wise, for a whole number of degrees. For assumed longitude, we have to pick the number of minutes, which is 60 minus the minutes, right, because we're in east. And when we do that, that's 11.3 uh, minutes east. So now we have to choose, are we going to be 59, 11.3, or 58, 11.3? And which is going to be the one that's closest to our DR position? It's the one that's 59, 11.3. And then <clears throat> when we do the uh, LHA calculations, of course, we're east. We add the GHA. comes out to 340 degrees. Now. We know that when the uh, sun crosses our meridian, the LHA will be zero. So we must be 20 degrees before noon, which turns out to be an hour and 20 minutes because the sun moves at 15, 15 degrees per hour. And so we must be that much before noon. So we're 10 hours, 1040 in the morning, boat meridian time or local mean time of the boat. All right. That's basically the concept of assumed position and why it's important, especially when you're using these uh, site reduction tables 249. All right. In your exercise book, you're going to find exercise 18. And uh, the direction should be fairly self-explanatory. You're going to be given your coordinates. Um, you're going to pick an assumed latitude. It gives you the Greenwich hour angle for the exercise for each uh, position. You could put 360 here if you need to, to allow um, 
uh, subtracting for your assumed longitude if you're if you're doing the west longitude. Uh, <clears throat> then this is just a reminder of uh, how to get your proper minutes. You assume create your uh, assumed longitude in here, and then calculate the local hour angle. Remembering subtracting if you're west, adding if you're east. And if you are east, remember the minutes have to be 60 minus the minutes of the GHA. Okay, and then we have exercise 19, which is sort of a culmination exercise where we're going to kind of walk through pretty much everything that we've learned so far, uh, <clears throat> where we're going to um, calculate LHA, you're going to get an assumed position, you're going to um, calculate HC, Z, Z, N. This is where you're going to need the exercise manual to go look up in the tables. You're going to calculate your intercept. And we're going to plot it on a prepared Mercator chart. So again, information is pretty much self-explanatory. Here's all your givens. And you, what you're going to do is you're going to find the local hour angle, uh, the coordinates of your assumed position, your assumed latitude, your assumed longitude. You're going to compute the altitude HC, the azimuth angle Z, the bearing of the sun ZN. All of that comes from the tables. And then the calculate the intercept towards or away, uh, as we showed in um, our last uh, episode. We're going to have some work forms, a blank globe, and pre-calculated blank Mercator charts. So we're going to spend the next episode on work forms. So this is kind of a preview, but it helps to organize your work. The blank globe is so that you can draw the um, spherical triangle uh, that's associated with this particular a site and the pre-calculated blank Mercator charts is for plotting and we're going to do a lot more with plotting in a future episode but in this case we uh, the exercise manual has pre-calibrated Mercator charts for you to, to uh, plot your site and your line of position. So with the information that you received uh, on the previous slide or, or in the exercise manual, you're going to fill in your DR position. You're going to fill in the sun's GHA. Uh, you're going to do your assumed longitude calculation, get your local hour angle. And then you're going to copy that to this uh, LHA section. You're going to copy, you're going to create your assumed latitude and mark it here. Make sure you mark north or south. Uh, the corrected declination north or south, uh, again, from the um, tables. Well, sorry, from the nautical almanac, but I believe in your givens, right? You're given the corrected information, so you don't have to do that part. Um, then uh, from the tables, you can get your alt uh, your HC. You may have to correct it with the D, as we, again, we had explained earlier. So you finally calculate your corrected HC. Your observed altitude again is given, okay. You put that in here, and then you have your towards or away where you're subtracting uh, one from the other. And then here's where you put your Z or your ZN calculation. Once you have all this information, you should be able to draw a fairly good spherical triangle. Um, you know, assume uh, wherever you like Greenwich to be, and where you are, and the poles, uh, et cetera. And here's the chart where you can plot it, uh, where you're going to um, plot your assumed position. You're going to draw your uh, arrow towards where the sun is, your ZN. And then you're going to move your line of position up or down toward or away from the sun. And then draw a line perpendicular to it to um, mark your line of position. Now, if you're not familiar with plotting and drawing on uh, charts like this, uh, we do recommend that you take uh, Dominique's coastal uh, navigation course, where he gets into more detail on how to plot on a Mercator chart. Um, but we're hoping that you already have that information. Uh, and celestial navigation is definitely something that builds on your knowledge of coastal navigation. There's some extra exercises besides those two exercises. There's exercises 68 and 69, which will give you more practice um, 
with uh, using these uh, simplified forms and uh, prepared Mercator charts and give you more practice drawing your spherical triangle. So we'll see you next time, uh, and I uh, hope you have a, a good uh, rest of your week. Thank you. Goodbye.